this is the first lecture on differential equations and virus series by Eli Hawkins. This was the first one we did this term. Now we began by saying that this is an algebraic equation which we're used to, which is x squared minus x plus 1 is 0. Yeah? Now, in differential equations, we're trying to solve for a function, not a value. So this is an algebra we're solving for a value, which in our case is the value of x. But here we have d2y over dx squared plus dy over dx squared plus y equals x. And this is a differential equation because we have to find a function. It's also got differentials in it, so. Uh, x is our independent variable and y is our dependent variable because it's y we're trying to find really. And this is also called an ordinary difference equation. And it's a, a second order ordinary difference equation because we have to find we've, we've gone two back, haven't we? So it's d2y. If it was d3y, then it would be a third order difference equation. Now, this here, pnx dny over dxn plus la la la, uh, this is a linear equation where you've got p is going down each time. And that's probably if that's that'd be a constant maybe. And what well, we've got different value for us, we've got dy and dy over dx, all the way up to dny over dxn. And an, this is a linear. Now an autonomous equation is where there is no independent variable, which in our case is rx. If there was no rx, if it was zero, then it would be an autonomous equation. So we've got a couple of examples here. We have d2x over dt squared plus sine x equals zero. Now first of all, we know this is a second order differential equation because it's got d2x. Now, do, is it a linear equation? Now looking at this, it's not going to, it's, we've got y, dy over dx, and so on. But we can't have that here because sine is not a linear equation. So it's not a linear equation. And also autonomous. Is it autonomous? Is there no independent variable? Yes, because the, the independent variable in this case is zero, so there isn't one. Yeah. Here we have another example. D2x over dt squared plus x equals sine t. Now first off, we also know it's again a second order differential equation. We know it's not autonomous because we have sine t here and we also know it's linear because x d to x over d squared it's going up linear linearly and it gives a couple of examples where it would be used give us y equals x squared plus cx we differentiated it now we use y prime as a shortcut y prime equals 2x plus c and I can rearrange it to get c on its own and then we can substitute this value for c up in our top equation and you can times it all out and you'll end up with y equals x y prime minus x squared we also did another example y equals a e to the 2x plus b e minus x to the minus x we differentiated it we then differentiated it again and we noticed that if we get one of these and two of these, that equals this. Now we kind of just noticed this, I don't think there was much method about it, but it ends up that y double prime is equal to y prime plus 2y. And then on a sheet he gave us, he gave us a list of things that you need to know for the rest of this course. Partial fractions of polynomials. You need to know how to do partial fractions. If you don't know how to do that, I suggest Wikipedia-ing it. There's a good Wikipedia thing on it. And trig identities. There's a hell of a lot of trig identities that you need to learn. Now, some of, most of these, actually, I probably don't even know because there's no method about it in really learning it unless you sit down and copy them over and over again. And finally, the only other thing you need to know is complex numbers, which you'll have done in and vectors and complex numbers. Uh, R equals the real Z plus the imaginary Z. And 
you need to know that r bar is the real z minus the imaginary z. Now the way you can remember that is just it's a bar on top of the z which looks like a minus. So you know it's got a minus in it. You also need to know that e sine theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is also another one you did in vectors. And in these cases, cosine theta is equal to i e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2. And for sine, it's basically the same apart from you're dividing by i because it's the imaginary. And you're also subtracting. So we've got e to the minus, no, e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. Now you can remember it's a minus because sine has an i, and an i looks like a, a subtraction sign, and that's it for this lecture.